All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about, once again, kind of doing another anti-Benchmade video. I know there's going to be a lot of hate thrown at Benchmade in my videos because of the community and Benchmade themselves have done a lot to garner some flack from me. And so I'm just going to bring these, vi these knives out and say that this honestly could be Benchmade. And what I mean by that is you look at knives like the Hogue Deca here, you look at knives even like the Zero 462, um, or 562, sorry, but other knives, even like the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, and there's just some amazingly stark differences between Benchmade and these knives. I think moreover, especially between something like the Deca and the Bug Out. It's a really important uh, point to note because these two are actually super close in things like weight, size, blade thickness, but a lot of it comes down to the fact that Benchmade just really refuses to innovate and refuses to bring in their quality and refuses to bring in reasonable price. This Hogue Deca here is in CPM Magna Cut. It uses um, closer handles to the stock uh, version of the bug out. This bug out's a little bit different because it does have G10 and a 20 CV blade. But if we were talking about the stock Hogue Deca, this guy, versus a stock S30V um, bug out, the the Deca is actually coming in at a lower price than the bug out and with better materials. Now I will say it is, like I said, similar handle material. This is like an FRN or they call it like a polymer handle, but I, I think the primary reason they go for that is primarily due to weight. G10, while a much stiffer handle material or a lot less flexible, does tend to be a little bit more heavy. So if you're going for a truly, truly light knife, this is probably not the best handle material. Even that being said though, both of these are like two ounce knives. So I don't know how much validity there really is to that anyways, because they're both incredibly lightweight, incredibly thin and incredibly slicey. But the biggest thing for me is that this knife, depending on you know if you get it coated or not, the uncoated version of this blade comes in at $127 to $120, whereas this blade uncoated comes in at about $150, and that's for CPM S30V. And I think this kind of hits the point on the head that Benchmade used to be, especially with things like the Griptilian, this thing used to come in at like well under $100. Something like this guy used to be like 80 bucks. And nowadays that Benchmade has a more devoted follower base. They have influencers that will relentlessly push their products. You see that Benchmade has lost a lot of their idea of bringing value to the consumer. And they kind of just sit there and say, hey, this is what we're going to be. This is what we're going to charge for our product. And if you don't like it, you can go piss off. And I think that coupled with the fact that their price increases haven't really been justified at all. Like they haven't really explained to their consumers why the prices keep going up. They just keep going up. And a lot of it too, and once again, even diehard Benchmade fans have talked about literally the butterfly tax existing. And to me, all of these kind of points really just destroy the value of Benchmade in my mind. And once again, especially when you see, you know, this is the Benchmade bug out, one of their most popular knives at this point. And you see this Hogue Deca that comes out and it's using arguably better steel than even 20 CV, but it definitely better steel than CPM S 30 V and similar or similar weight, similar specs and a substantially cheaper price point. Now, some of that might be argued away that maybe Hogue makes more of their money selling G 10 gun grips. So maybe they don't don't need to, you know, charge more for their knives. But ultimately, I truthfully think that this is a reasonable price for a USA made utility slash just general purpose kind of borderline tactical um, lightweight pocket pocket knife or folder, whatever you'd like to call it. And this is when I look at the DECA, I, I honestly think like this could be bench made. Like if they really genuinely cared, like actually cared about their consumers, this is what they would be bringing you. Something that is well thought out, well executed. They could be themselves working with Elishwitz, even though I do think that uh, Hogue tends to work with him more. But genuinely, they could be pulling the same thing off. This doesn't have to be some brand like Hogue, which I appreciate them for doing. And I will say, I think Hogue does bring a lot of heat, especially like value wise with their blades. Uh, you know, they're all USA made or most of them at least are USA made, made out of really good steels 
and Hogue really knows what they're doing when it comes to knives. I feel like it's kind of a shame, to be honest, that most people sleep on them. And once again, things like the Deca aren't necessarily my personal flavor. Like, I don't absolutely love everything about this knife, but so much of it, when we talk about a value-based blade, is, is really there. Like, these, this knife is genuinely worth what it's costing, and the value equation for me is really there. And so while not everything aesthetically is my favorite, it, it totally works. The jimping is effective. The grip is good. It's lightweight. It's definitely something to note that it's very blade heavy, but that's because this handle literally weighs nothing. And I mean, like there's not even like steel inserts in here. Once again, it's very much bug out esque, but uh, it works. And if you're looking for something that's going to be like a really good um, kind of high end box opener, like if you're tired of dealing with low quality like box openers, box cutters, like this thing is going to be what you would replace it with, right? And so you have super tight lockup, obviously no blade play in any direction. Your, uh, your lineup or your alignment is going to be perfectly fine. It's kind of hard to see in there, unfortunately, with that worn cliff it's so deep down there, but you know, your lineup for your centering is perfectly fine. And like, honestly, this is everything that a Benchmade should be. It's just so disappointing to see that these knives keep getting more expensive and the quality, the value, the materials, and especially moreover, the quality control of these guys is just not there. I mean, I've heard so many people, so I haven't personally experienced it myself, but I've heard many people breaking or heard of many people breaking their Omega Springs. And, you know, I personally have had a lot of lockup issue with my um, Adamas's my Adamasi, if you will, my auto and my mini Adamas have not been the best when it comes to like the quality of the access lock. Um, they're definitely not what they once were. And so it's just very disappointing to see, you know, Benchmade kind of as this giant not caring about the people that literally made these companies. Because if you know anything, uh, especially about my EDC knives, I have had at least two dozen different bench maids over the years and i've really witnessed personally the slow fade from knives like the skirmish and my griptilian being like really truly what bench made was about like the pinnacle to now there are more modern knives that just do not live up to it at all. I mean, I even remember my original D2 version of my Adamus uh, that I had. Wish I had not sold that knife off, but my original D2 version of the Adamus was such a folding tank. You could just pound on that thing all day long. You could treat it like garbage and it would just keep coming back for more. And that's why I honestly bought the, both of the Adamuses that I bought because I bought them with that mindset that these are still gonna be like the good old fashioned D2 versions. And they certainly costed just as much as the D2 versions, if not more. Um, but yeah, the performance just wasn't there. So honestly, like I said, this could be bench made. But since it's not, definitely would recommend checking out the Hogue Deca. Mine is in the Warncliffe version, but if you are more of a traditionalist, you like those drop points, they do offer a drop point version of this blade. Same handle colors, same blade color, or same kind of like blade finish with you know the same blade steel so if you want a drop out or drop out if you want a drop point you can get that but uh yeah so anyways guys rant over that's my personal experiences with benchmade disappointing sad to see but that is what it is as always god bless and i'm out